Hello everyone, welcome to 3dedesignacademy.com. In this lesson, I'm going to show you guys how to use the array tool. Now the array tool is used for making patterns like this one. I think this is supposed to be a speaker grill. Now, Elias doesn't exactly have the best um, set of parametric modeling or computational modeling tools, but it still has a few. So let's go ahead and get started and show you guys how to use the array tool in order to make a pattern. All right, so right now I have a curve and a hexagon shape over here. So first of all, let's go to the top view like this, and I'm just going to click on the array tool. It's located on the transform. So just double click on it, and it's going to show you guys a couple of options. Now, because right now I'm on the top view, I'm going to use X, Y, and for us uh, to start, I'm going to just use the linear function. And all you have to do is just click on a curve or set of object or grouped object and just click on it and just build and it's going to create a pattern like this. Okay, so right now I think the spacing is a little bit too tight. Um, so you can also adjust the spacing and the numbers. So it is also going to be in X, uh, X first and then Y. So X is number one. If you want to increase it this way, uh, you can just add it like this maybe you want to do 10 and if you want to uh, increase it that way you can also do it like this now if you want to adjust the spacing um, you can uh, use the uh, the manipulator over here or you can just do uh, enter the number so maybe like 125 i think should be a pretty good number just do this and now one of the things that you can do is you can use stagger. So right now, if you look at this mesh pattern over here, you will see that there's uh, they are, well, basically the circle next to it is uh, between these two. So what you can do is just click on stagger and it's going to, well, basically stagger the pattern. Okay, so that's how you use the linear, but there is also something called a uh, radial. So what it does is if you click on this, as you can see over here, it actually creates a radial pattern. Now, when you're doing this, I suggested that you click on fit to circle because if you decide to click uh, or play around with the angle over here, it's going to create a little bit weird pattern. So I'm just going to say fit to, uh, fit, to, uh, fit to circle, and that's going to, uh, well, as you adjust the number of, uh, as you adjust the number, it's going to automatically fit it to a circle. But of course, um, I think that might be a little bit too much, so I'm just going to reduce it. And also, if I just increase the number, you'll see that the center ones are stack. So what you can do is, if you click on this one, go radially, and it's just going to fill in nicely between the, uh, between the essentially the main axis. Okay, so using this, let's go ahead and create a grill pattern. So what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to reduce the number though, because I think there might be a little bit too much. So let's make it, well, maybe something like four. Because the problem is, um, well, I don't know if it's so it's because alias setting, but it does take a long time if you were to fill at these. So I'm just going to reduce the number like this. And I already created a sheet for this one, so let's go ahead and use this. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab a draft tool like this. I'm just going to grab everything over here and let's create a surface like this. I'm just going to make sure that the direction is uh, going down and let's make the length a little bit longer. Okay, so maybe something like 100 over here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a surface fillet between these. Now to start, let me just go ahead and delete the construction history so that it doesn't do anything funky. And I'm going to grab surface filler over here and I'm going to just do a radius and it's just going to be G1 circular just to keep it simple. And for the size, I think 10 should be okay. And I'm just in case, I'm just going to uh, switch everything to default. Let's grab everything over here. And I'm just going to make sure that the main direction uh, is good. And I think this is ready to fill it. So let's, so right now I think it's crunching. So let me just click. Yep, it's crunching. So let me just wait for a little bit and hopefully it'll create a fillet. All right, so I paused a little bit, but okay, so it looks like it was actually able to create it, but looks like it didn't trim on some of the surfaces. I don't know why, but well, you get the idea. So uh, let me just do this. Let me see if I can just change it to Bezier surface and see if it will actually trim because, well, that's kind of ridiculous that it doesn't trim. Now, if you want to just manually trim, uh, you can just, well, manually trim it, but uh, it's kind of ridiculous that it doesn't 
trim for some reason. So let's uh, let it crunch again. Uh, still doesn't trim. Uh, well, that's because usually there's a short C, uh, COS that's not going all the way through. So I, I think this is probably the problem area right over here. So I don't know why it does this. Let's take a look. Okay, so it looks like the COS is a little bit short. Well, okay, so, well, that's unfortunate. Let me just change the size and see if it'll build a little bit better and actually trim it. Because I, the last thing I want to do is individual trim it. That really def defeats the uh, purpose of using the array tool. So hopefully this time it'll actually trim. Uh, no, it still doesn't. And that's, well, that's really ridiculous. Okay, so one thing you could do is, well, if this happens for you, what you can do is just uh, delete the uh, well, delete everything over here, and you can just group it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to actually trim, uh, well, get rid of everything except for the center one. So I'm just going to deselect like this. I'm just going to show you guys a, a sort of a shortcut for this one. So I'm just going to untrim. Oh, it's well, that's. Oh, wow. Okay, so I'm just going to do all like this. I'm just going to delete the COS like that. And I'm just going to delete the curves over here. And I'm just going to do everything at once. So right now the COS over here it, uh, doesn't exist. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, well, actually let's project this. So I'm just gonna click on all of these over here like that. And I'm just going to say normal like this so that it actually project, uh, projects nicely. Uh, looks like there's a duplicate over here. Okay, so let's just take a look at it again. So I'm just going to project this one again. Hopefully this one is good now. Now the draw precision is set to max, so I don't know why it looks a little bit funky there. Okay, but let's try it again. So I'm just going to try and trim this that's really weird okay well at least it trimmed so it's good okay and let's go ahead and do the same thing over here oh actually for this one I'm going to do it separately so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do two separate operations uh, so uh, in order to trim this so I'm just going to grab these curves I'm just going to put them in a new layer like this so that it's uh, separate and I'm going to pick this one and pick this one over here and I'm just going to group it Okay, so I grouped it and now let's use the, let's see, let's use the array tool again. And I'm just going to use the same setting to build the, uh, build the object first. So instead of uh, doing the tube or the, um, what is it, the draft tool, and then doing a fillet, I'm going to uh, basically do this uh, separately. So I'm essentially copying just the object. Okay, so that's good. But I do have to trim because right now, if you look at this, it's all blocked in. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hide these groups like this. I'm just going to make them invisible. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use the exact same, uh, oops, uh, I don't know why they're not grouped. Okay, so let's pick it as an object, group it. And I'm going to use the same array to do this. And now because there are curves, it's a lot easier to project. So all you have to just pick the surface, pick all the curves like this and project it from view. And that's all you have to do. So now I can trim it and let's go ahead and get rid of the curves and let's bring that in. So now I got a nice pattern over here and I think that looks pretty good. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, do a separate example over here. So I'm just going to go ahead and hide these ones over here and let's go ahead and do this one. All right, let's uh, hide the sheet. So for this one, I'm going to uh, show you guys how to do a staggered pattern uh, with a hexagon with an even spacing. So what I'm going to do is, first of all, let's go ahead and use array. And this time I'm going to change that uh, back to linear. And I'm just going to keep the number a little bit smaller because I don't want it to be too much. So let's start with a hundred over here, hundred over here, stagger. I'm going to turn that off for a sec and just build it. All right, and I'm going to stagger it over here and you'll see that the spacing between these 
uh, these two is a little bit greater than this one. And I want to uh, have a uh, same set of spacing. So what I can do is, well, first of all, I do need to measure the distance over here. Okay, so it looks like it's 13.3975. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to offset this curve over here so that it's the same distance. So let's go ahead and offset it. So 13.3975 and turn it like this. And I'm just going to say enter like that. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to measure the distance between here and here. Now you can do this well just with the uh, locator. So if you were to grab the distance from, well, basically uh, when you're doing the array tool, what, uh, the distance that you're actually measuring is from here to here, this one lined up. So if you were to just turn the stagger off like this, basically it's a distance from here to here. So what you need to do is, well, basically measure the distance from here to here. And let's see if it's actually lined up. Okay, so it looks like it's uh, perfectly lined up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just create a curve like this and snap it over here. And I'm going to try to measure this distance. Now, of course, if you uh, you can just click the distance tool and you can use the uh, middle mouse one just to measure like this, or you can just create a curve and just click on it like this. Well, it's going to be the same result. All right, so it looks like the target that I'm looking for is actually 86.6026. So let's go ahead and enter this over here. So 86.6026, and there it is. So now it's perfectly located over here. Uh, this curve, you don't really need it. So I'm just going to get rid of this. I'm going to delete that one, and I'm going to delete the locators over here. And now you got an exact same uh, pattern over here. Oh, actually, you know what? I think I might have deleted the history on this one, but that's okay. All right, so let's grab the sheet again, and I'm going to show you guys how to make a pattern for this one. So I'm just going to grab the draft tool like this, and I'm just going to do this one over here. And since the sheet is flat uh, and we already have the curves over here, let's go ahead and project it too to actually trim the surface. So I'm just going to trim it like this. And before I do anything, let me just delete the construction history like this. All right, so that looks pretty good. Oh, looks like it's uh, crunching a little bit. All right, so now essentially I got a grill pattern. So now if you want to fill it this, and since I already have everything trimmed, I'm going to use the round tool. So usually these kind of meshes, um, the, the fillet size is usually a minimum. So what you can do is you can just um, just to use a G1 circular. Now this is a little bit big, but imagine this a lot smaller. So I'm just going to use the initial radius of uh, 10 and I'm just going to just use the box pick like this and let's say accept. And it looks like it was able to select everything. So let's go ahead and build it. And let's see how it looks. Now 10 might be a little bit big actually I think it might be a little bit too big. I should have made it a five. I wonder if it's possible to, oh, there it is. Okay, so yes, uh, okay, so thankfully it didn't crash, but obviously the fillet is a little bit too big, so why don't I just do a revert, and I'm just going to set the initial radius to five, and let's do it again. So I'm gonna say accept, I'm gonna say build, and let's uh, let it crunch off for a little bit and hopefully it creates a result that I want. Okay, so it looks like it's taking a little bit of time. Okay, so it looks like it made it, and there is the fillets there, and I got a nice honeycomb shape, so yeah. All right, so let's bring that back. So that is how you can use the array tool to create patterns. Thank you guys for watching, and see you next time. Want to learn Autodesk Alias and digital sculpting? Then become a member at 3ddesignacademy.com where you'll find hundreds of video tutorials ranging from basics, including curve creations, intermediate level tutorials such as this wheel, all the way to class A modeling of the entire car exterior. Interested? Visit 3ddesignacademy.com.